It's Scott Tempesta with Sailing Anarchy. It's another one of our Metro boat videos. We're in Santa Barbara today, which is so cool. Weather's awesome, people are cool, a lot of money here. We're gonna show you a boat that I've had a lot of requests for. A lot of you have commented on our videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's a boat that has this wild appeal to a lot of people. This though is not any Hobie 33. This here is Captain Sluggo. One, two, three, listen. So this Hobie 33 is like none on the planet. First and foremost, take a look at this bottom. This boat is obviously dry sailed, which is nice to be able to show a boat from underneath for once. Beautiful black and white, gorgeous, as smooth as you could imagine. It just looks stunning. Let's come back and take a look at the keel here because you're gonna see that this might be one of the few stock parts on the boat. Not exactly, but you'll see when we go upstairs. Stock Hobie 33 keel, nicely finished, obviously, uh, Rick Yabsley, the owner of this boat, has put a ton of effort and a ton of money into making this the nicest Hobie 33 that you'll ever see, and it pretty much is that. So that's all pretty self-explanatory. It all looks very stock. It is very stock. We'll come back and I'll show you the rudder. It's not quite so stock. So if you know anything about Hobie 33s, you know one of the worst things on the stock boats is the rudder. I mean, it's just this awful little thing. It squares off about here. It's not very great. Hobie 33s in general are both a blessing and a curse in a lot of ways. Mostly blessing. When we show you the totality of this boat, this boat has truly been blessed. So here it's a custom rudder, obviously deeper, smooth as can be. I forget what it's off of, but uh, it fits nicely. It's the same rudder post location. It's just a bigger, more modern looking rudder. Now, here comes the treat, because we're gonna go upstairs and show you what's really happening. So the first words out of your mouth are, that's not a Hobie 33. Yeah, it is. Rick Yabsley went to Dennis Choate. He had uh, Alan Andrews help with the engineering, and he decided to make this boat what this boat really should have been, but what this boat is, and it's kind of beyond belief. I mean, just starting right here, check this out. The aerodynamic stern rail back here, I mean, it's just, really? I've never seen that on OB-33. Uh, but that's just absolutely nothing. A beautiful tiller here, right? It's fabulous. Traveler nicely located here. You've got your little foot rest. He redid the cockpit in terms of making it longer and then obviously making this all smooth. Got rid of the really bad winch islands. Hobie 33s in stock trim with their winch islands are so ergonomically uncomfortable and ridiculous. Uh, this boat, he tried to make it as smooth and as simple and as free from all that kind of stuff as possible, and he really did. I'm gonna show you an interesting thing that they did with the outboard. They did a number of things with this boat, keeping in mind that they thought they were gonna do Transpac. So they had to have certain kind of engine regulations, fuel tank regulations. So rather than, I believe the rule said, okay, outboard can either be in here somewhere or off the transom. It can't be in both places. So the only way to make it right was to get rid of the old weird well that was in the back of the boat and put in a proper one. Come on, let's take a look at that. It's really cool. So you might ask, what's this little funny filler cap right here in front of the main sheet cleat? You know what that is? That's a fuel filler. You know why? Because this boat has a fuel tank built into the boat that leads to where the engine is. And check this out. Underneath this is essentially a Melgus 32 outboard inboard station, as it were. Um, you've got the flat hull plate for when you go ahead and 
want to lower this thing down, it stays up against the hull, but otherwise it's completely flush there when the engine's out of the water. It's a 9.9 .9 horsepower motor, and it's just so beautifully done. If you've been on a Melgus 32, you know what these are like. If you've been on a Flying Tiger 10 meter, you know what they're not supposed to be like. I know, I own two. It was nothing as slick as this, but again, when you're redoing a boat and you put some creative thought into changing the things that need to be changed, this is a really, really, really cool thing. The owner of this boat's a little old school. He likes a regular compass. So there's a spider web there. There's a story there. I'm not going to tell you it right now. But so he's got his compass there. So he's always got something that he knows he can count on. If you look further forward, you can see that he's got four BNG displays on the mast, which is really awesome. Very trick, and we'll talk about that as well. Here's where the cockpit changes a little bit. So obviously no winch islands, but he extended the whole thing forward a uh, just a tad. I think he told me about that much. Opens up the cockpit lengthwise, getting rid of the winch islands, opens it up widthwise, which is good because this is a super narrow boat. What, eight feet? Right around there. Uh, so, so you got to maximize what you have. They did a great job. Ergonomically and design wise, this is just so slick how they did this. It, it really is, what's great about this is a lot of guys modify their boats. They make changes and they do this. This boat was thought all the way through. I mean, bow to stern, keel, rudder, everything. And you'll see what they did down below. Before we go there, take a look at this deck. It couldn't be any cleaner. Two hired winches, which can also be spinnaker winches. Two primary winches right here. You've got an adjustable lead for a floating jib tack, which is awesome. No tracks, nothing. This boat, they went up in the rig four feet. And it's a carbon rig, double spreader. And since they went up, they decided not to carry 155% Genoa's, which you could actually. PHRF will allow you to do that. And so this boat is actually on the market. And if I was buying it and I lived in San Diego, I'd put Genoa tracks on the boat or at least another floating lead like they did for the non-overlapping jib and have a 155 on this boat for going up wind and light air. That combined with that tall rig, woo, that'd be pretty awesome. Let's step a little forward here and again, keep, keep the whole super clean theme in mind because that's truly what they did. Uh, here's again our floating jib leads right here. He's got a barber hall system right here they can inboard the, the lead to. He said that they usually trim the jib right about sort of in here. That's a really narrow sheeting angle, but it's so nice to have the flexibility to go all the way in or all the way out. No handrails, no nothing. The main hatch is not anything like a standard Hobie is. They cleaned that up, recessed it, it looks beautiful. Take a look at this. Look at how nicely they integrated the instruments onto the mast. I mean, the aesthetics on this boat are just outrageously good. They made everything not only fit right and be functional, but it really looks good. I mean, this boat, it's hard not to be really excited about this boat because like I said earlier, this ain't any Hobie 33. The continuation of the theme goes all the way to the front of the boat. Nothing here for the most part. A couple of leads for the split four guy. Oh, stanchions, wanted to talk about these. So they look like they, they're carbon, and they almost feel like they're carbon, but they're not. You cannot use carbon stanchions because they crack, and they rip, and they break. So they, he had these made. It's a different kind of composite, one that's a little more forgiving than carbon fiber would be. Here you go, look at this. How's that for clean? Just a single attachment point for four guys and or probably put your generous or spinnaker stay sail right there as well. Look at the bow, nice and open. Not a real bow pulpit, but enough satisfies the rules. Just so well done on this boat. Rollers for jib, of course. And seriously, like this is as nice as a four deck can be on a boat like this. It's worth pointing out that this boat carries both symmetrical kites, as you can see by the spinnaker track on the mast, and asymmetricals. You got the twin tack lines up here. This boat has a couple different uh, code zeros, an upwind and more of an offwind zero. And those come back and they can also go right through where four guys would go. It's just a nice way to cover your bases, symmetrical, asymmetrical. As you can see from this shot, it's got a slightly longer boom than stock. It's one foot longer. Uh, then the stock, the mainsail is absolutely huge. 
especially when you factor in the fact that the P dimension is now four feet taller than the stock OB33. It's really impressive. Take a look at the hatch. It's beautiful, recessed. Got rid of a lot of the bulky stuff up on top of the boat. And look at these windows. Now that is beautiful. I think those are actually stock windows, but they've obviously refinished them and made them fit nice. The contrast between the dark limo tint on those windows and the white finish, just super sexy. All right, guys, let's go down below and check it out. Check this thing out inside. Like, it's wow. It's so cool. A lot of carbon fiber, fair amount of modifications here. First thing you might notice on Hobie 33s, they have a keel box here for uh, the retractable keels. And in this case, they cut it down quite a bit, put a nice carbon plate over the top of it. I mean, it's so cool. Check out the bunk tops. Look at this. Carbon fiber bunk tops. So great. The aesthetics on this boat, just in terms of the color combinations, I mean, with the red piping, the black, the black carbon, the red, the white, the carbon, I mean, it all ties in so nicely. They took out all the weird headliner stuff that the stock Hobies have. They had some weird stuff that lined up against the hull up there. They took all that out. Again, Dennis Choate did almost all of this work, and uh, Alan Andrews helped with a lot of the engineering. It opens the boat up. Again, they were thinking Transpac, and so for anybody who would buy this boat, you know, you'd want to be able to have people sleep here, but you'd like to be able to hold them in, so you just pull them up with the pulley system and keep them in there from falling out on the boat. It's got two pipers aft, fabulous carbon fiber custom uh, electronic panel there that's really, really great. I mean, it's just, it's, it's such a nice place to be because it just looks so great. Carbon capped bulkheads here, it goes all the way around. They added that ring frame, the stock boats don't have that. I'm fairly certain that that is added on to what the boat normally has. They wanted to make the boat stiff, they wanted to make the boat light, and they certainly did that. Come on up here real quick. They put a really nice keel step mast here. That is, this is all stock, This all of this structure right here is all stock Hobie. They did take out the four peak, uh, you don't really need that, but it has, I mean, if one wanted to, you do have enough support there and probably add a couple of things in there. You could add a V-berth in there for, for camping, for weekending on this boat. I mean, it's so pleasant down here. It's actually a boat where you go, well, maybe I wouldn't mind weekending here. Um, again, just light, open, stiff, and beautiful. I mean, what was the last time you went on a boat this small that looked like this that you know didn't cost three hundred thousand dollars little nav station here which is nice you've got a b and g readout you've got your vhf you've got your place to uh, store some of your utensils so yeah it's not the most pleasant place but you can actually take care of things down here uh and that's and they, it's one reason why they added these this used to just come up and I believe they added the top here to make these nice little benches, put the little uh, covers on top and god damn, you got yourself a really slick Hobie 33. Well, that's it. That's our Hobie 33 and what a Hobie 33 it is. It's for sale by the way and you can simply add your comments in there about which if you're interested in it. First dibs, I'm here right now so you're gonna have to beat me on this. Wow, I just couldn't love it more. And I hope you liked this video because this is a special treat. You're not leaving yet because you have two things to do. You have to hit the like button and you have to hit the subscribe button. Those are your orders for Nobleman Productions, for Sailing Anarchy. I'm Scott Tempesta. We're out. It kinda makes you feel good.